and gentlemen, welcome to Texaco Design Culture. At this time, please silence all electronic equipment. Audio, video, and photographic devices are prohibited during the performance. Thank you. The event will begin when prepared. <laughs>
Hello, everyone. How are you? Thank you so much for coming. I can't see you very well from here, but if you can't hear me or if you can't understand me, please scream. Um, <laughs> the piece Mr. Newman and I just played for you was Villa Lobos' first sonnet fantasy from 1912. This was Villa Lobos' second piece written for violin and piano. The first one was his first piano trio from 1911. Villa Lobos is probably the most well known Brazilian composer of all times. And this piece is one of the first representative pieces for the Brazilian violin repertoire, along with Leopoldo Miguel's Sonata for Violin and Piano, Opus 14, from 1889, and Eric Oswald's Sonata for Violin and Piano, Opus 36, from 1908. This first sonata, along with other chamber music pieces, marks the beginning of concert music in Brazil. Before that, most musical activities were restricted to church services and opera. I chose to start this recital with this piece in order to give you some perspective of what Brazilian music for the violin sounded like in the very beginning. So now, we can look at music that was composed very recently, more specifically, 2017. The next four pieces were part of my doctoral treatise at Florida State University. They were commissioned by me to the studio of composer and professor Dr. Liduino Piton Beira. And I'm happy to officially premiere them today. But first, let's take a look at how this project came about and understand a bit about the pieces and their compositional process. Just as a guideline, I will talk about each piece before playing them. So talk, play, talk, play, just so you don't get lost. <laughs> Collaboration between composer and performer. Four new commissions from the studio of Dr. Liduino Pitombeira. Like I just said, this was my doctoral treatise at Florida State, which I defended in 2017. It basically explores Liduino Pitombeira's biography, main musical influences, his compositional method called systemic modeling, and the four commissions for violin and chamber ensemble composed by Pitombeira and his graduate students. In the history of violin repertoire, there have been many examples of collaboration between composers and performers, such as Josef Joachim and Johannes Brahms, Max Bru, Antonio de Vojrak, and now Piton Beira and me. Why not? When given the opportunity to work with composer Piton Beira in his studio, I didn't think twice, and we decided to just get to work in this collaboration that resulted, resulted in the composition of the following four pieces. As you can see, uh, I can't see well from here. Preludio for Violin Solo by Marcel Castro Lima. Bagatellas for Clarinet and Violin by Gabriel Mesquita. <laughs> Ponteado for Violin and Piano by Elder Oliveira. And Brazilian Landscapes number 15 for Violin and Piano and Clarinet. Well, I'm talking a lot about this Piton Beira, and you probably, maybe you don't know him yet, so I figured I'd talk about him a little bit. This is him. Uh, Piton Beira was born in the small town of Russas in the state of Sierra, which is also my home state, so yes, bias. He is a professor of theory and composition at University of Rio de Janeiro and a recipient of many awards, such as MTNEA Shepherd Distinguished Composer of the Year Award for his first Brazilian landscapes, the number one. He earned his PhD in composition and theory from Louisiana State University, where he also taught for two years after graduating. He started his music education at age 12 with guitar lessons. However, he went to college actually for electronic um, technician degree. And it was during that time that he started having contact with Brazilian Northeastern folk and urban popular music through a band he formed with his colleagues. Both the exact sciences in Northeastern music are present in his music. In fact, Pictombeira's works reflect a multitude of different influences that can range from the imagery of his hometown landscapes to Shakespeare and to mathematics. His contact with popular music brings him closer to Northeastern traditional music and to contemporary instrumental music. From electroacoustic pieces to string quartets, his catalog displays a mix of urban, electronic, folk, and tonal music. Pitombeira's most updated catalog of compositions contains more than 200 pieces. The instrumentation varies from solo recorder to full symphonic orchestra with choir. 
He has written three concertos for string instruments, one cello concerto dedicated and recorded by Professor Dennis Parker, and two viola concertos. The first one was premiered by Richard Young in 2013. Recently, Pitomeda has been developing a research project focused on his compositional method called systemic modeling and the solo piano pieces by Brazilian composer Camargo Guarnieri. As the first one that you can see over there, a production of original works from the systemic modeling of the first book of Ponteius by Camargo Guarnieri. He and his graduate students are analyzing all of the Ponteios by Camargo Guarnieri's first book of Ponteios. What are Ponteios? Ponteios is just a way Guarnieri called short solo piano pieces. And his group, Pitombeira group, is transforming their analysis results into new pieces, one by one. They are doing that through systemic modeling, which is a new compositional tool created by Peter Beyer and his students that examines the main structure of an existing piece and uses the resulting model to create a new one. And here is how it works. Um, as you can see on this diagram, he gave us, this is Peter Beyer's diagram, he gave us the first example, which is a melody he created. And you can see on the first section of the diagram, he isolated, I think I can use this, ha. He isolated just the notes, and you can see each note by bar here. And then he called the first paragraph, he, he figured that that one was a pitch class set 0, 1, 3. And then he calculated how they were modified, how this first group was modified into each paragraph. And here on the second part of the diagram, you have the inversions and the transpositions of that first pitch class set. And then in the end, he transforms that into sort of a mathematical formula thing that he can use later. And that's what you see here. He gets this formula and then he creates, he gives it a new, completely arbitrary pitch set the now is 047. And then he used the same transpositions that he found in the first example to create new notes, and then here they are on the staff. And then it's his decision to choose instrumentation, tempo, uh, dynamics, articulation, texture. So whatever comes le uh, later, it's the composer's choice. And you can see here, so we have the example he created and the melody that came out of it. The same process can be applied to any other parameter in any given piece when using the systemic model. So it just doesn't need to be notes. It can be texture. It can be form, as you might see in the other pieces. When asked about applying this method, method to other pieces, especially to tonal compositions that were not composed using, using serial methods, as the example, Pitombeira answered that any piece can be analyzed by any analytical tool. The most important aspect of systemic modeling are the relations obtained between values in a chosen parameter and the resulting compositional planning. So it's not a strict, completely strict uh, compositional model, it's open. According to Peter Beta, it's important to emphasize that systemic modeling is not a restrictive set of rules to predetermine the compositional process. It offers a set of basic and general rules with no particularization that serves as a basis for compositional planning. It's the composer's decisions which elements he'll choose to analyze and which ones will be applied to the obtained system. Oh, slide movement. Okay. Here is how our projects merge. For my treatise, the composers analyzed five ponteus, which resulted in four short pieces. As you can see on this diagram here, you can see, it might be hard to see, but uh, there are the ponteus and the composers, and what piece was resultant of that, and the instrumentation, tempo, whatever. Another aspect of our work together was the revision of the pieces pieces and adjustments I made as a violinist according to what is possible on the violin and accord, according to each composer's idea for their pieces. That part is better described in my treatise, which I'm not gonna go through today because of time, but you can read it, it's online. Oh, here are also a couple aspects that were the most analyzed for the pieces. Uh, form, texture, rhythm. Texture was an interesting one. I wrote the f up to four voices, but actually were up to six voices. 
with two instruments, so it's very funny and creative how they solved that problem. All right. The first piece you're gonna take a look today is Preludio for Violin Solo by Marcel Castro Lima. Castro Lima analyzed Guarnieri's Ponteo number no. eight, and he focused his analysis on the parameters of form and melodic contour. During the first stage, he concluded that Ponteo number no. eight had a melodic line and accompanying ostinato which you can see in this figure there. You can see the accompanying um, triplets ostinato on the left hand and the melodic line on that right hand. And Castro Lima decided to keep the same moving lines for his composition. In contrast to other composers, he isolated the melodic layer from the accompaniment ostinato and used Schenkerian analysis to identify the main melodic line of the piece. Then, Castro Lima used the Schenkerian structural notes as his compositional system in order to construct the melodic contour of the new piece. I'm not going to go into Schenker right now, but here's how he did it. His ostinato structure was displayed in a melodic line on section A. Um, here's how he divided, so that's his melodic line, and that's how he used the ostinato figure from the piano and that appears in the middle section of this piece. It's interesting to note that he compacted the four voices that are on the piano into just uh, one instrument and how he got creative with that. Well, now I'm gonna play for you Preludio for Violin Solo by Marcel Castro Lima.
Aquafina is now paying for this. So. <laughs> well, the next piece is Gabriel Mesquita, Three Bagatelles for Clarinet and Violin. Mesquita based his compositional planning on Guarnieri Ponteo's number nine, focusing mostly on the param parameter of texture. To analyze the texture of the Ponteo and create his compositional model, Mesquita used a computer software, software called Pasmati. Through the software, he conducted a sectional analysis, which is an analysis of how many notes occur in any given time frame of a piece. So basically, in each second, how many notes are present. He used the mathematical results to determine which sections of his composition would increase and decrease in texture. Because he chose to write for violin and clarinet, Mesquita faced the challenge of exploring the technical possibilities of both instruments in order to create extra layers of texture. He achieved the desired effects by exploring the use of double stops, chords, tremolo effects, and motophonics on the clarinet, also percussive and vocal effects for both instrumentalists. The result is a challenging piece for both performers and one that requires good inner rhythm. As mentioned before, Mesquita's analytical approach to Garnier Ponteo No. 9 was focused mostly on texture instead of form. Through the analysis, he found the existence of three distinct sections on his analyzed Ponteos and he divided his piece into three sections that he called bagatellas. He differentiated each bagatella by changes in texture and rhythm rather than tempo, meter, or melody. And you can play them continuously instead of separately as you will listen in a little bit. Uh, here's an example of some of the effects that he used. And I'll leave the stage just for a second so you can set up and I'll be right back to play bagatelles for you.
Thank you so much, Heiner. This was fun. Well, the next piece is Ponteado for violin and piano by Elder Oliveira. Oliveira based his compositional planning on the systemic modeling of Garnier's Ponteo No. 5. At first, he analyzed the parameters of form, rhythm, texture, harmony, and melody. For form, he used the same as a Ponteo introduction, ABA plus coda. For rhythm, the upper layers are composed of three main rhythmic structures, which you notice that happen frequently, and also a rhythmic cell from the popular genre machixi, from Brazilian popular music. And it's applied to the intermediate, intermediate and lower voice in augmentation and extension, as you can see in the example. So you have the machixi rhythm, and then the augmentation and extension, which are gonna form the ostinato gesture in the piano left hand, which I'll talk about in a little bit. The texture he divided into four main layers. An upper one played by the violin, which carries the main melodic line and has the audition of auxiliary voice towards the end. To accompany intermediate voice related heterophonically, played by the piano right hand, and the fourth lower one played by the piano left hand with long syncopated rhythms without downbeats, forming a very uh, characteristic rhythmic ostinato. It's interesting to note how Oliveira varies each small section with the addition of voice on the violin and the larger one with chains in both accompaniment and tempo. You can see one of these small variations here. This is the first time the violin comes in and you can see it's just uh, simple notes, I mean, not simple, but. And then <laughs> on the second time, it's the same rhythm as the same thing, but it's completely intricated with double stops. So that's how he worked texture on his um, music. In section B, the variation occurs rhythmically, and you can see in this last bar here, that's beginning of section B and how it changed the piano ostinato and it, it gets more moving. For the harmony, he worked with two pitch class sets per bar, organized into vertical blocks and moving in parallel motion by raising and falling of a second. For the melody, Oliveira based his melodic lines on transpositions of pitch class sets from Guarnieri Ponteus. It features 64 pitch sets generated by transpositions of those found in the systemic modeling analysis. I did say 64. It's quite an intricate piece, and I'll go out right now to come back with Mr. Newman and play Ponteado for you.
for the last piece of our program. We're gonna look into Pitombeira, Brazilian landscapes number 15 for violin, piano, and clarinet. Pitombeira Brazilian landscapes are a series of pieces which represent the composer's impressions of Brazilian scenarios. For Brazilian landscapes number 15, Pitombeira chose to work with two genres from Northeastern popular traditions, Encelença and Desafio. Encelença is a type of song traditionally used in funeral processionals in the Northeast Sertão of Brazil. Desafio is a song challenge between two singers, very common in the Northeastern folkloric music. To create Brazilian landscapes number 15, Pitombeira analyzed Guarnieri Ponteios number six and seven separately and used the resulting compositional planning in each movement. For the planning of Encelença, Pitombeira decided to follow the form of Ponteio number six, ABA plus coda, with a thicker texture in section A and A line. Section B starts with a rhythmic change in the piano as the upper voice becomes sparser and more alternating, playing their melodies one at a time, as you can see in the picture. Overall, the transitions between sections are smooth with rhythmic augmentations used to connect the sections, especially on the violin line. For this appeal, Pitombeira worked with the parameters of texture, form, and degree of indigenous harmony, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, degree of indigenous harmony is the number of times each chord happens in each given section of a piece. So he calculated that in order to decide how many times each chord would happen in his resulting piece also, which is this appeal. In regards to form, he chose to amplify the form of Guarnier Ponteus number seven, which is the one you see in the picture, multiplying every section by three times the number of bars. For example, the original Ponteo, as you can see, has two introductory bars, while the Zafio has six. Pitombeira also chose to use a faster tempo, energical, which is energetic, in contrast to the contemplative slow movement of Guarnier Ponteo. Likewise, he chose to alter the meter, employing mostly seven, eight time signature and using meter chains only to mark the change of section. In contrast with Encelenza, the transitions in Desafio are much more abrupt with changes in meter, rhythm activity, accompanying lines, and range. In order, for example, to differentiate section B from the others, he changed it from 7-8 to 4-4 four, four, and explored the use of long double stop and higher range on the violin, mostly one octave high on the previous sections. This created a somewhat ethereal uh, texture. For the construction of harmony, Pitombeira primarily used transpositions derived from the octatonic scale, which was presented in the model, and complementary tetrachords from the scale. Well, it was a pleasure to me to work with these great composers, and it's such an honor to be able to premiere these pieces today in front of you and to share this with you and with my great colleagues, Mr. Numa and Heiner. And now I'm gonna leave the stage one more, one more time so we can do some setup for the trio, and when I go back, we are gonna pay Pitombeira Brazilian landscapes for you. Thank you.